switching the gear a little bit, and I'm not going to talk about prediction per se, but talk about a um, very important component of uh, S2S pr prediction, that is air interaction. I hope at the end of my talk, I will convince you that whatever you know about air interaction to this point can be updated a little bit. Um, I also hope I don't have to um, convince you how important air air interaction is to uh, S2S as variability, including uh, prediction. So let me just jump start. And uh, this cartoon uh, illustrated what we know uh, about air interaction to this point. That is, air interaction is about exchanges of energy, momentum, and material through the air interface. We have a sensible heat flux, we have a latent heat flux or evaporation fresh freshwater input. Um, we have momentum flux and uh, fluxes of different uh, gases. Um, over the centuries, most of the studies of air interaction focus on air sea fluxes. And we still have not uh, fully resolved this problem yet. Uh, for example, the uh, fluxes of gas is still a ongoing research. Um, we still need to make accurate measurement of um, uh, variables uh, near the su surface to accurate estimate air sea fluxes. And even after Togo Core, we have this uh, wonderful core algorithm, flux algorithm, and there's still room to improve. And we still do not have a global uh, observations of air sea fluxes. So there is still a lot of a blind spot over the ocean uh, where we do not have uh, direct observations of air sea fluxes. And we have to rely on uh, estimate from numerical models and satellite. And then we know they're not accurate. So this traditional air sea interaction problem has not been solved. However, we cannot stay at the ocean surface forever. Let me point two things to you about air interaction. First, from atmospheric point of view, once we have the energy or gas from the um, sea surface into atmosphere, it does not uniformly distribute in the boundary layer. And we know that uh, the uh, temperature profiles and humidity profiles, and you can guess the gas profile, has a very rich structure within the boundary layer, within the lowest one kilometer, for example. And also um, for the air sea interaction or the air sea fluxes to influence uh, local and global weather and climate, uh, the energy, the, the gases has to um, propagate or spread from the ocean surface uh, to the entire atmosphere. And that usually, uh, is done through uh, deep convection, for example, moisture. But in order to the, uh, for the, for the um, um, water vapor, for example, evaporate from the ocean surface to affect uh, deep convection in the tropics, uh, we have to consider many processes such as uh, convective downdraft, entrainment, and uh, uh, eddy, uh, vertical eddy transport. So, to fully realize the impact of air sea interaction or air sea fluxes to weather and climate, we have to understand how the energy, the momentum, and the gas um, being distributed through atmosphere boundary layer above the ocean surface. And this is just an example of observations. And uh, you can, uh, I'm just cut uh, the uh, lowest part of the sounding observations from, uh, uh, from, from a ship. And in the lowest one kilometer, that's marked by the uh, white line. And you can see the uh, relative humidity, the upper panel, uh, vertically is not uh, very well mixed. And sometimes they have um, uh, pretty good um, vertical profiles. And the vertical eddy flux of moist static energy also has a very rich variability within the boundary layer. So they all point out that uh, uh, we have, to under, we have to relate the boundary layer to air sea fluxes in order to uh, fully understand how air sea fluxes influence the weather and climate locally and globally. Now, if you go to the ocean, and it has been several decades uh, since we realized that uh, the ocean mixed layer also has very rich vertical structures. 
uh, the salinity and the temperature profiles can vary uh, based on the uh, the wind forcing, based on fresh water input, based on, based on the uh, solar energy input. It can create the, um, different layers. Uh, you can have a mixed layer, you can have a barrier layer, and uh, until you reach thermocline. And all those virtual structures influence the um, how sea surface temperature varies, and that would directly affect surface fluxes. And it, this is an example of uh, uh, field observations from a ship. And I don't want to go to detail. I just point out the upper two panels represent the, um, the momentum flux and the heat flux. And then the uh, colored panel represent all different variables, such as zonal wind, temperature, salinity, and turbulence and from a surface down to about 150 meters. And you can see those very rich variability vertically and uh, time-wise uh, in the upper part of the ocean. And those, all those variabilities would influence the surface temperature and influence uh, surface fluxes. So if you put everything together, you'll find out there's a many interesting variables uh, at both sides of the air-sea interface. In the atmosphere, we have the wind shear, we have uh, uh, cold pools, and we have uh, diurnal um, uh, variability. In the boundary layer, we have updraft, downdraft, and those all influence air-sea fluxes. And then under, uh, on the other side, below the uh, air-sea interface, we have ocean eddies, we have the um, uh, internal waves, and we have uh, buoyancy-driven uh, vertical convection and shear-driven turbulence and many, many other things that all help distribute energy, momentum, and gas from the air-sea interface downward to the upper part of the ocean. And those all thing together uh, from the upper layer through from the upper ocean through air, air sea interface to the atmosphere marine boundary layer form an air sea transition zone. And air sea interaction should not happen just at the air sea interface, but through the entire transition zone. That's my point. And I recommend we think differently about air sea interaction from now on, not just to focus on air sea interface but include the upper ocean interface and the atmosphere marine boundary layer as a single identity that we call the air uh, transition zone. And we study air sea interaction through this uh, transition zone. This has been done uh, to a um, different uh, extent by uh, uh, in the past studies, but I want to emphasize that uh, to fully understand this, we will have to have uh, simultaneous and co-located uh, observations of these air-sea transitions. That means we have to observe the atmosphere boundary layer, ocean uh, surface, and the upper ocean uh, simultaneously. Technology-wise, at this point, uh, ship is still the best way to do such observations because we can um, um, install all kind of uh, observations of the atmosphere and ocean and surface. And for example, um, the other one uh, possibility is air, uh, airplane drop sounds. And airplane can uh, launch the drop sounds, at, um, measure the vertical profile of the atmosphere, then go into the ocean to measure the ocean, upper ocean profiles. And this is just an example of uh, ship measurement um, of both atmosphere and ocean for temperature and the wind. Um, this is the example of airplane measurement of upper, um, upper ocean and the atmosphere uh, through a transaction. Both of them are pretty good uh, with one exception that they, both of them are expensive and uh, logistically challenging. You have to range the ship, you have to range the airplane and uh, the coverage of their uh, observations is still limited. So the future observations probably will depend on the new technology, especially uh, the technology of autonomous, uncrewed uh, devices. And uh, we have uh, many of them. Um, uh, from left to right is kind of a time span. Li uh, left is what we have, and uh, to the right is in the future. Uh, we can have a different type of uh, uh, advanced technology to observe the atmosphere the inter air sea interface and upper ocean simultaneously. I'm just give you one example that is currently uh, feasible 
And uh, we have uh, uncrewed surface vehicles such as sail drain, and you can see that red uh, sailboat. And we have ocean gliders uh, in the upper ocean can profile the, uh, the, the ocean temperature, salinity, and uh, current. And we can fly an air drone above that. And all the three together can give us a continuous profile of the upper ocean, air sea interface, and the atmosphere boundary layer. And this is, technology speaking, this is feasible. And at this moment, we are trying to uh, practice the uh, sail drone and the glider coordination to see how, what's the best way to coordinate them to measure the uh, upper ocean and the air sea interface together. And then in the near future, we'll add um, the air drone above it. And so we can have uh, the entire profile through the air sea transition zone and to help to study the uh, air sea interaction in a new way. I'll stop here. So basically, the 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 uh, the bottom uh, the the bottom line is uh, is that uh, we probably will think differently air sea interaction and, and uh, go beyond the air sea interface to both sides and take the air sea transition zone as uh, the place where uh, air sea interaction uh, takes place. I'll stop here and uh, take questions. Thank you. Thanks, Chidankia. That's a really good redefinition and revolutionary. Think. Um, any questions for Chidong on this? And while we wait for questions, Chidong, uh, could you comment briefly on this redefinition or rethinking of the transition layer, how you would foresee this being um, improving our Earth system models, uh, specifically like improving S2S predictions, right? How should we change our modeling of this transition layer in addition to observing it? Should we model this as a transition zone component of the Earth system, or should we still be having an atmospheric model and an ocean model, but have this transition zone model then um, as a coupling component of the two? Yeah, uh, that's an excellent, excellent question. You know, I'm not a modeler. Based, my, based on my limited knowledge right now, um, in, in, in most of the cases, people develop atmosphere model and ocean model separately and develop the coupler, so-called a coupler, so put them together. And uh, um, I think at least if we develop a, a, a comprehensive coupler uh, based on this uh, new uh, definition of Earth's interaction, probably uh, the coupler... Uh, uh, should not cover only the air interface. Should probably extend to the uh, to the upper ocean boundary. I don't know exactly how to do that yet, uh, but mo most importantly is you know if you really want to study the Earth system as a uh, com as a uh, integrated component, and uh, then when you develop model, you should start start develop the couple of model uh, simultaneously rather than the atmosphere model and the ocean model separately and then couple them together. I think that that, that has been the twenty. 20th century uh, practice, and in 21st century, we should think uh, differently uh, in terms of model development. Thanks, Chidong. Any other questions for Chidong? So are you envisioning this um, like a observation process study or a campaign in any specific region around the globe? Or... Right now, yes. Right now, uh, I mentioned that we are trying to coordinate uh, sail drones with the gliders. We tried that once uh, in the uh, um, North Pacific uh, winter uh, storm, and uh, currently we are uh, practice we are pra practicing that uh, in uh, the tropical Atlantic during the hurricane season, and uh, in the future, uh, potentially actually in this. Uh, uh, um, hurricane season, we should have uh, air drone, but uh, the development of that particular air drone was delayed, so we, we didn't have that. But uh, yes, in, in the near future, that's that's what we want to do. We want to find opportunity to put all three together just to see uh, to what extent we can measure the upper, the entire transition zone simultaneously using uh, the coordinated uh, uncrewed vehicles. Yeah. Last chance, one final question for Chidong. Okay. Um, 
thanks a lot, Jerome. I don't see other questions for now. Um, we, we might have more questions during the uh, break that we have. With, uh, if you could join this, um, the networking session for the next 15 minutes. So we'll